In this video, we present the solution to question number six from practice exam two from math 1210, in which case we're asked to compute the limit as x approaches three from the left of the absolute value of x minus three over x squared minus nine. Well, given that the function is continuous on its domain, we just combine together polynomials, absolute value, quotients, uh, that's going to be continuous on its domain. So my first inclination is just to plug in x equals 3, in which case we get the absolute value of 3 minus 3 over 3 squared minus 9. In the top, you're going to get the absolute value of 0. In the bottom, you're going to get 9 minus 9. This becomes 0 over 0, in which case we have this indeterminate form. Um, it means the limit could be anything. We actually don't know. We're going to have to try something else to figure out the limit here. Now, it might be tempting to say that the limit doesn't exist on this one, which that can happen. If you do get zero over zero, sometimes the limit doesn't exist. But the limit could also exist. We don't have enough information yet, so we need to pursue this in a different way. Now, the reason that we're getting zero over zero is because there's a common factor in the numerator and denominator. In fact, that factor is going to be x minus three. The x minus three is obvious in the numerator. It's a little bit concealed in the denominator. It becomes much more apparent when we factor this thing. If we factor the denominator, you're going to end up with an x minus three and you get an x plus three. I did that recognizing x, squ x squared minus nine as a difference of squares. And so what happens if we pursue the factorization here? This time, we're not going to plug in 3 because we'll get the exact same problem we had a moment ago. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 3 minus, meaning if I take a number that's just a teeny bit less than 3, what does that do to things? Okay? In which case, then in the numerator, we get the absolute value of 3 minus minus 3. And so if you take a number that's a little bit less than 3 and subtract from it 3, you're going to get something that's a little bit less than 0. So the numerator will look like 0 minus in the well, absolute value of zero minus, we'll come back to that in a second. Three, three from the left minus three, that's gonna give you another zero minus. And then you're gonna get a little, a number a little bit less than three plus three, that's gonna give you a six minus here. Now let's pay attention to signs of these things. If I take the absolute value of a number a little bit less than zero, which means it's negative, if you're a little bit less than zero, you're negative. The absolute value always makes something positive. Therefore, the numerator, when you take the absolute value, is gonna be something positive a little bit bigger than zero. In the denominator, you're gonna get something a little bit less than zero, which is negative. But if you take a number that's a little bit less than six, that, that's still positive, because six is positive. A little bit less than positive six is still positive six. Um, and so whether you had like a little bit less than six, exactly six, or a little bit greater than six, it's always gonna be positive. So you might as well just say just a positive six right here. And if we just focus on the signs, right, you're gonna end up with a plus over a minus and a plus right here. So what this already tells me right here is the final answer is going to be negative, okay? And so how does this thing go on from here? Well, notice you have this 0 plus on the top and bottom. When you cancel these things out, we're going to end up with a 1 over my, the minus 6 because those things cancel out, giving us the negative 1 6, which is the correct answer right there. Um, if you find that a little unsettling, that weird arithmetic with 0 plus and 0 minus, that's okay. It really comes down to the following idea. If you take the absolute value of x minus 3 over x minus 3, this right here always gives you plus or minus 1. And the difference comes down to when x is greater than 3, you're going to get a plus 1. And when x is less than 3, you're going to get a minus 1. Or similarly, if you take the function, the absolute value of x over x, this thing always equals plus 1 and minus 1, where you get x when you're greater than 0, and you get minus, sorry, x when it's greater than 0 gives you plus 1, and x when it's less than 0 gives you negative 1. That's what happens when you see this ratio involving the, uh, involving the absolute value. Because if x minus 3 is positive, you're just going to get x minus 3 divided by x minus 3, it'll go away. On the other hand, if x minus 3 were negative, then the top would be positive and the denominator would be negative. The absolute value cancels out because you could just rewrite x minus 3 as the absolute value of x minus 3 negative. That'd still be negative. These things cancel out, leaving you the negative sign there. So that's why we are able to do 0 plus over 0 minus. This always cancels out just to be negative 1. And it goes the other way around, too. If you have 0 minus divided by 0 plus, this always equals to negative 1. If you don't like the 0 plus 0 minus business, then the idea is just to rem remember this. If you have the absolute value of a quantity divided by that exact same quantity, then it'll always be plus or minus 1, depending on whether that quantity was originally positive or negative.